Meanwhile, NATO is carrying out its biggest ever air drills in Germany. 25 nations are participating along with its newest member, Finland. Now, what is interesting about these drills is the timing. They come as Ukraine has started its much anticipated counteroffensive against Russia. So what exactly is the purpose of these drills and why now? Because the fact is, nothing about the Ukraine war has been decided yet. The Ukrainian counteroffensive that has been backed to the hilt by the NATO military alliance could be rebuffed by the Russians. And in the event Ukraine's counteroffensive is defeated, will NATO then decide to get into a direct confrontation with Russia? Is this what NATO is preparing for with its military drills? Our next poll gets you the details. NATO is showing off its strength. It's carrying out its biggest ever air drills in Germany. 24 nations are participating in the air defender exercise. Japan has also joined as an observer. But the question here is, why is NATO flexing its defense muscle? Is it simply posturing? Or is it really preparing for war? If Ukraine's counteroffensive fails, is NATO going to fight the war against Russia? Just look at the sheer extent of these drills. They'll continue for two weeks. Around 10,000 personnel and 250 aircraft are in Germany. Hundreds of them are from the US alone. The exercises will play out at four sites across Germany and one each in the Netherlands and in the Czech Republic. Nearly 2,000 flights are to be carried out over the North and Baltic seas. The drills will play out at four sites across Germany and one each in the Netherlands and the Czech Republic. It began with an air show in Wunstorf, featuring cargo and refueling planes, workhorse aircraft. These planes have played a crucial role in sending weapons and supplies to Ukraine. Today, America's F-16 and F-35 fighter jets took off from the US airbase in Spangdalem. Airborne Warning and Control System, or AWACS, reconnaissance planes are also there. And it's not just defense systems. The NATO forces are testing out overall preparedness for war. The US military on Tuesday showcased a medical exercise at the Ramstein Air Base. Yesterday, simulated medical evacuation flights arrived at the air base from Romania. Personnel ferried dolls on stretchers into a waiting hospital bus headed to the Landstuhl Army Medical Center. The air defender drill spent about five years in the making. The planning began back in 2018. German Air Force General Ingo Gerhardt insists the drills aren't directed at Russia. He says they're defensive in nature. But interestingly, he also said that when he first proposed the drills five years ago, the trigger was Russia's annexation of Crimea. And now the exercise comes as fighting escalates at NATO's doorstep in Ukraine. One cannot help but speculate. Will NATO fight Ukraine's war for it? NATO Secretary General Hen Stoltenberg says the alliance's support has helped Ukraine in its counteroffensive. Ukraine has uh, uh, launched a counteroffensive. Uh, what we see is uh, fierce fighting. It's uh, still early days, uh, but we also see that uh, uh, the Ukrainians are uh, making gains and uh, uh, that uh, Ukraine is able to liberate uh, occupied uh, land. This is due to the courage, the bravery, the skills of the Ukrainian soldiers. But it also highlights uh, and demonstrates that uh, the support NATO allies have been giving to Ukraine now for many, many months actually makes a difference uh, on the battlefield as we uh, speak. But what if things go south? If Ukraine's counteroffensive fails, will NATO take the matter in its own hands? Only a few months ago, Pulitzer Prize-winning American journalist Seymour Hirsch hinted at something similar. He said, and I quote, I'm told the game is going to be, this is NATO, we are supporting NATO in offensive operations against the Russians, which is not going to fool the world. It's us fighting Russia. What he meant was Washington might directly meddle in the war if Kyiv starts losing to Moscow. These were some big claims. What made him say that? 
he attributed them to inputs received from his friends in the US administration. It's something to think about. Not only has the US supplied endless weapons to Ukraine, it has also looked the other way when Ukraine used them for offense, stepping over the West's red line to use its weapons only for defense and counteroffensive. This brings us back to this question, one that we've been asking for a while. Whose war is it exactly? The question still stands. Is it America's proxy war? And will it become NATO's now? Bureau Report, Vion, World is One. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.